Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about the continuation of product shortages and supply chain disruptions. Earlier this year, supply chain shortages in lumber were being felt acutely across the entire construction industry. Lumber prices peaked on May the 7th at $1,710 per thousand board foot. That was an all-time record high price. But since that time, prices have fallen 41% in the past month. Those who purchased large quantities of lumber at the peak in order to secure supply are now dumping that supply on the open market, securing the knowledge that better prices are coming in the future. The wave of excess inventory now hitting the market is going to push prices down even further. This is the classical market cycle that happens when supplies are constrained. Buyers secure the scarce supply and build inventory. But once the market reaches a new equilibrium, the excess inventory is consumed and new orders come to a screeching halt. The dramatic shift in demand causes prices to collapse quickly. The extremes of feast or famine amplify the price swings dramatically. But of course it takes more than lumber or steel or concrete to build a house or an apartment complex. We're seeing elevated prices for many different commodities. For example, drywall has gone up in price by about 30% since this time last year. Here too, we're experiencing similar characteristics to what we've seen in the lumber industry. However, a new outbreak of COVID-19 in Shenzhen is threatening many of the supply chains in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. While the global situation in the pandemic continues to improve, economies around the world are experiencing the full spectrum of economic impacts. Economies like the U.S. and Canada are experiencing emergence from the pandemic. Other parts of the world like India, Brazil, the U.K., and yes, China, are experiencing new outbreaks. These outbreaks are causing massive supply chain disruptions, and they're going to continue to have global implications well into the fourth quarter of this year. A couple of months ago, we were considering that supply chain disruptions we've experienced during the pandemic would start to ease by the middle of the year. However, at this juncture, it's going to take another 6 to 12 months for supply chains to normalize. The region surrounding Hong Kong is one of the most productive parts of China. The city of Shenzhen is a relatively new city that grew up in the shadow of Hong Kong. And 50 years ago, Shenzhen only had a population of 50,000 people. Today, it has a population of over 13 million. Shenzhen is located in the province of Guangdong and is responsible for almost 10% of China's economic output. The seaport in Shenzhen is one of the largest in the world, and an outbreak of COVID-19 among dock workers has caused a dramatic drop in capacity at the seaport. Today, the port is operating at 30% of capacity at a time when demand for shipping is acute. Even prior to this latest outbreak, ships were waiting up to two weeks in order to get a berth in the container port. Now, both Lowe's and Home Depot have large logistics centers located next door to the seaport. These logistics centers serve as a gateway for the big box supply chains into North America, and fully 90% of commodities like hardware for doors in North America come through this channel from China through this supply chain. We're talking about hinges and locks and door handles. They all flow through this one point. Material shortages are isolated to specific line items. For example, many Home Depot stores report being out of resilient channel. Now, of course, not all projects require resilient channel. But if your project needs it for acoustic isolation between floors or between apartments, you're stuck waiting. Some stores are completely out of fiberglass drywall mesh tape. Some stores are out of cement backer board. Many are completely out of electrical switches. In some cases, only a handful on the shelf, but not enough inventory to complete a single project. Active supply chain management is emerging as one of the most important functions for anyone involved in any form of construction or property improvement this year. The savings and security supply weren't bringing particular attention to this function. If you know you're going to be needing electrical outlets and switches and boxes in the next 180 days, but you have not secured your pricing or your supply, now is the time to be placing those orders and getting them fulfilled. There's shortages in plumbing components and plastics. There's shortages in shower enclosures. We've even experienced shortages in appliances. On a recent project, we placed an order for 18 refrigerators. The supplier said they had 300 in stock when we placed the order. And when they went to fulfill the order, the actual number in stock was zero. In the end, the supplier substituted a different model with a higher list price for the same price. This was after we had switched appliance suppliers for the second time because the first one couldn't fulfill the order. If you are not actively managing your supply chain in 2021, you're going to have a very difficult year. Now is the time to dedicate some resource to staffing that function and staffing it really well. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen.
We'll talk to you again tomorrow.